Who knew a newspaper column could generate so much debate? I normally get pretty easily forgotten. Rarely hit a sore spot like Mitchell Johnson's did. He used his regular column in the Sunday Times to deliver the journalistic equivalent of this. Oh, I like that. That's fast. That's something. The former quick said David Warner didn't deserve a hero send-off when he retires because, amongst other things, he is a cheat. Daddy button. A lot of commentators reckon Johnson was out of order. Do you? I think Johnson's only sin was downplaying the seriousness of what Warner did. The Australians really working on the ball. Trying to get that uh, reverse. The South Africans did it so well. That one moment of ball tampering, the one moment we caught on camera, I should say, no way was it the only time it happened. That moment in South Africa in 2018 brought an entire country into international ridicule in a way that we haven't seen since Trevor Chappell walked slowly to the crease in 1981. That's a disappointing finish. Steve Smith, Cameron Bancroft and David Warner made Australia the laughing stock of the sporting world. And yes, everyone was doing it, but they got caught. And thus we conceded the high moral ground to everyone, even Piers Morgan. Well, not like they cheated a few years ago when they were caught using sandpaper to manipulate the ball. That was cheating. So he doesn't deserve a farewell test. It shouldn't be a question of why David Warner isn't getting a celebratory send-off. It should be why is he even in the Australian team. Some things are sackable offences, and this was one of them. It beat all the other homegrown cricketing scandals. It was worse than that underarm bowling incident, worse than Lillian Marsh betting on England that same year, worse than Shane Warne and Mark Ward giving info to the bookie in 94, and worse than Warney's failed drug test. Probably not worse than Warney blaming his mum, though. <laughs> Better support from Darren Lehman. He was on radio saying Johnson was entitled to his opinion. Whether you agree with it or not, that's his opinion. He's entitled to that. Lehman was right about that, but he was wrong about this. Because, you know, I coached obviously both of them. They're good fellas, and you know, I'm sure they'll work it out. They're not both good fellas. There's one good fella. Edge, and he's gone as well. And one cheat. And I'm deeply sorry for the consequences of what I was involved in. I can't believe we think it's controversial for someone to say that a primary architect of Sandpaper Gate, and it is a legitimate gate, a central player in a conspiracy to subvert the rules of a game, shouldn't get a bells and whistles thanks for your service send-off. So you're completely backing Johnson? No, not completely. He shouldn't have muddied the waters by talking about Warner's recent form slump. Because for every time Warner was responsible for one of these... To it. Got him! And he's got him! Oh. He did ten of these. <laughs> There he goes down the wicket, Davey Warner, he's taking him on. There he goes. You can't diminish the man's record. And I don't know if Jonathan was right when he said Warner had failed to take ownership of the scandal. I failed in my responsibilities as vice captain of the Australian cricket team. I think he did, he just didn't keep on doing it like his constantly self flagellating captain. To see the way my old man's been. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Well, one person's failure to own... ...is another's dignified silence. Ish. Warner should be denied anything approaching an official send-off because of the original sin, not the subsequent lack of public atonement. Well, no regrets. And also because sometimes it really does take only one goat. <coughs> I'm Ben Harvey. For more Up Late, click the subscribe button below.